Thanks. I'm glad I got here in time to hear that last presentation because I'm not a very structured person. I need that in my life. <laughs> Um, so I have this thing that I, I like to do when I do speaking engagements because I collect speaker selfies. So you're going to get a second to stretch because I would love to take a quick selfie. I'm a millennial, that's what we do. So we're going to do a selfie and that you can stand up and then I will, I will chat with you for a little bit. So you got to stretch. You have to act excited. I'm really, really, really excited to be here with all of you today. I see some familiar faces. Um, in the crowd, which is super cool. It's one of my favorite things about Denver. I call it a big little city. So uh, you really can meet a lot of people and having a network here is really interesting and, and fun uh, in Denver. I haven't seen it anywhere else I've been and I go a lot of places. <laughs> um, so I'm Danielle Schutz, Colorado native. I just have to lead with that because you know we're real bougie about being Colorado natives. If you know natives, like, it's a thing. Okay. <laughs> I've been here for like four months. Oh, I moved here four months. Not today. I even say people that moved away for a long time and came back, even if they were born here, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So I was born in Colorado Springs, uh, and I went to CU Denver up here in Denver. So I've been in Denver for about 15 years, which is most of my life. Um, so I uh, am a finance executive, so I became a CFO at the age of 26. I was a CFO at the State Health Department here in Colorado. And I went into corporate finance and was the vice president of uh, business operations and finance for the West Division of Comcast, which basically meant I am the construction CFO. I managed a billion and a half uh, dollar budget, I had teams in seven states uh, and things like that. So I uh, travel a lot, stay pretty crazy busy. Um, the best part of my life is my two babies that are not babies. Um, Kai and Layla, my son and daughter, um, so a mom and, and sort of managing through all of that as well. And then last year I added something super fun to my resume, which I started a business called The Daily Boss Up. And I love to write, which is bizarre for a finance person. I'm kind of a finance unicorn, but I've loved to write my whole life. So it's like I'm going to start a blog and just talk about things, you know. i got a lot going on and maybe somebody wants to hear it. And, um, I got a lot of feedback that people did want to hear it and um, actually turned it into sort of a virtual coaching um, and technical application and that's been really fun and it just took off and we have subscribers in Australia, Canada and the US and people pay $7.99 a month and you get coaching and awesome sort of encouragement every single day. You get a text message uh, in the Daily Boss Up. So we started that last year and it was just this thing that was like me following a little bit of my passion that's turned into this whole business. So that's been really fun um, too, and that's what I've been exploring a little bit more in my life right now. And so I know I'm supposed to sit talk give you insights from the top, so I'm going to try to do that. I think because I became a leader of people and an executive at such a young age, very rarely do I think about my career as having arrived at the top of anything. Um, Often I just feel like I don't know what I'm doing, um, and I think that's, that's good, but I, I try to, I have uh, so many things that I've learned um, that I share, which sort of actually is what spawned the boss up, um, but I was trying to boil it down, like, okay, what are a couple things, because you're going to shut me down like the Oscars back there, I'm really long-winded, <laughs> but what are a couple things, like, if I could tell this audience today in 15 minutes, you know, what are some insights that I've learned on the journey, and the journey continues, so let me just say that, I've arrived nowhere. Um, I have a lot of career left in front of me. I have no idea what it looks like. I really don't, and that's kind of fun um, to know that I can decide to hang it all up if I want to and, and go home and be with my babies, or I can do the, do what's next or do something totally different. Um, that's one insight that I think is pretty um, encouraging for someone who's a high achiever like me is that I've learned along the way um, I don't arrive anywhere and like you know sort of going with the flow as much as someone who is much high achiever and as driven as I am can do. Um, and I think it's because the thing I've learned that's probably my number one insight is that we already have the skills we need to get where we want to go. And we discredit that in ourselves every day. If you are headed wherever you are headed on your dream, if being an executive is on your to-do list, if being a CEO is on your to-do list, and I hope it is because I want a bunch of badass women doing that, 
I want my daughter to work for a bunch of badass women. So I hope every woman in this room has those types of dreams. If it's on your to-do list, you already have what you need. And as women, we have to remember that. I used to think, oh, I just don't know anything. I'm 26, everyone knows more than me, and they did, about the subjects at hand. But I had other things going on. I had my son Kai when I was 16 years old. So Kai will be 17 himself in July of this year. So he is about to go to college himself. I'm not going to talk about it because I think he said it's a no cry day. Um, <laughs> we've got one year left and it just feels insane. So Kai and I grew up together. Um, and I used to think like this is my greatest shame. Not him, but being a teen mom. This is the thing I don't want to share with people. This is the part of my journey that people will judge me for. This is the thing that makes me not good enough. This is the thing that sets me back. This is the reason I have to walk in here and prove myself with this gigantic chip on my right shoulder every single day. And when I became a leader of people, because I had that chip and because I was carrying shame, I became a CFO for the first time when I was 26, I was really bad at it, like horrible. Like, I was just messing it up because every day I'm like, I'm going to try to be a leader, like a different leader, like all the leaders I've seen in my five years of working at that time or whatever it was, right? Like, I'll be, I'll be a boss. I'll be a boss like the bosses I've seen. And I just was blowing it. Like, nobody took me seriously. I was just struggling because I thought that it meant authority and control and power and that I had to know everything and I was working 80 hours a week. And I remember thinking like, all right, well, if I'm going to go down, I was going down. I'm just going to go down and be myself. And I just need to own that I'm 26. And that this room is full of people that need to teach me things. And it does not matter. I may never know as much as them. I'm here for different reasons. And I went into work and I said, you guys got to help me to my team. Most of my team have been at the state longer than I've been alive. And I said, you got to help me. I'm screwing this up. And they're like, we were waiting for you or someone to say that. <laughs> and it was the moment where I learned what authenticity does for you and vulnerability does for you as a leader. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm not just failing here, I'm failing at home where it matters the most because I spend all my time working and I spend all my time trying to do everybody's job. And I just let them help me get better through my vulnerability and my authenticity and created a group of mentors they might have reported to me on an org chart but that call me today anything that happens in my life they call me they give me an email if i need to pick up the phone oh man i'm screwing something up again i have this these people that know i want to learn from them and that's where i learned like who i am as a leader and i'm 33 now and i still have to walk into rooms and go you got to teach me you got to tell me what to do how do i make it work for this team the other thing that I learned, and we have to get better at this if we're going to be successful in these really big jobs, right, which is ask for help, stop doing crap you don't like to do. Like, really stop doing stuff you don't like to do. At home, at work, people want to help you. People want to help you. People say, how do you do it all? And I hate that question because it's just not, I don't. Like, I don't even do like half of what people think I probably do, right? I don't know the last time I put gas in my car, but like, that's not something I'm good at. I always forget. I'm going to burn out my engine. I ask for help. Like, I ask for help in things that I just don't love to do. And that's at work, too. Like, my team will be like, don't touch the spreadsheet, lady. Like, that's going to take me seven hours to do. We can do it in 22 minutes. I haven't been a technician in finance in many years, right? I've had big teams and people who are much better at that than I am. And I have no problem asking for help. And we don't have to do it all. Whoever's making you feel that way, just move on aside. Because it's just not real. You can't. You can't. We weren't built to do it all. And that's OK. We were built to do the things that we're really good at and passionate about. And we're, we were built to change the world. And you don't change the world by boiling the ocean every single day and trying to be the mom who bakes cupcakes, unless you like to bake cupcakes. I don't. <laughs> My son is a great baker, so I'm like, thank you. I, I, I don't. I, I, I've never been in the PTA, and it's, it's not because I was just too busy and I really wanted to do it. I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> and that's okay. That is okay. Right? We don't all have to be in the PTA. There's 
so badasses at PTA and I don't want them to do it. And then I was like, do you need money? <laughs> Whatever it is that you can contribute that makes you feel like you're contributing without spending your precious hours doing a bunch of stuff that you don't like to do because you burn out, you wonder why your career is not growing. Okay, you're spending your whole day in spreadsheets and you're not good at spreadsheets. The chances of growing your career, if that's what you're doing, are going to be slim, no matter how good you are, no matter how much work they pile on you. Whether you're doing your job or seven people's jobs, and I see people shaking their head because we've all been there, right? I'm doing seven people's jobs right now, and you're waiting for someone to notice. <laughs> what? That's not what they do. They're not going to notice that. You know, and I'm there. She's so great. She's doing seven people's job for one salary. I'm in finance. That's a good thing. <laughs> we, we, we have to have these boundaries for ourselves in everything that we do, and I am still learning that. I'm still figuring out what really lights me up and what I do when I go home at the end of the day and I just feel like I couldn't, can't move a muscle. That's usually a sign. I've journaled my whole life. I've journaled my whole career, which is awesome because to look back on some of the things that I went through and when I learned lessons and what did I learn and what was I struggling with and the thing that I would have you journal about is how you're feeling when you're done at the end of the day. How tired are you? Are you energized? Do you feel like, oh, all right, now I can go home and be mom, or now I can go home and do what I need to do, or oh, I'm gonna go have wine with my friends, or do you just sit on the couch and, and watch TV? Your body is telling you that you might be spending too much of your day doing things you don't like to do. Maybe 20, 30% of the hours in your day, draw the pie. Because you can't get away from, you know, we have to do laundry and we have, you know, unless you can afford to just buy new clothes all the time, so you've got to do that out. <laughs> uh, there are some things that we have to do. Um, we have to get up and we have to make it work on time. If you go somewhere or if you're running your own business, you might have 12 hour days where you're trying to get your business working. But how do you insert things into that pie that makes sense to you? And that's an insight that I've been learning along the way because I've had so many periods of burnout in such a short career, because my career really has been short thus far. I've had so many periods where I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna get up today. I don't know how I'm going to go today to this thing that I used to love. And I'm learning and journaling along the way to say, this isn't all working for me. This pie of my day is not all working for me. If I don't have enough time with my kids, then I'm really cranky. And if I don't shut it down after a business trip for three days, then I'm really exhausted. And that exhaustion lasts longer than I needed to to be my best self. So that's a huge insight for me to journal that. Another one is um, compartmentalize your time. Whatever you're doing, do just that. We are taught to multitask. Now, I don't know if, if you're married, if you're not married. I don't know how many men you have in your life, but ask a man to multitask. <laughs> just do it. They're like, what? You want me to do what? Double things at once, right? You know, I, you know, just. And, and, and I don't mean to stereotype men versus women. There's lots of men who I'm sure are great at multitasking, but you guys know what I'm saying. We're taught that that is what we're supposed to do, and then we wonder why we are behind the curve sometimes and we're not being seen. Because whatever you're doing, you should do just that. You want people to see how great you are at what you're doing. It drives my mom crazy, but when I'm at home with my kids, I put my phone away. So a lot of people are annoyed because it takes me a long time to answer texts. That's a price I'm willing to pay because it's exhausting to be answering texts and emails and to be trying to have a conversation with my kids. They deserve better, I deserve better, and the people on the end of those emails deserve better. If that means I'm unstructured, that's why I love to talk. If that means blocking your time, which I do, this is email time, this is text message time, go respond to all the text messages you got yesterday. Do that because we get into these habits where we're multitasking. First thing when we wake up, we start answering emails as we're getting ready, right, for the day, or we're talking to a friend, or we're talking to the kids, or and then we don't block out any time for us, for recharging, for journaling, for doing the things that we need to do to say, let me reflect on my day and see how I'm doing. And my schedule is insane probably for those people that are looking out in, but it doesn't feel insane because I just do what I'm doing in that moment. If I have a meet and greet after a speaking engagement, you, you won't see me on my phone. You'll just see me engaging with people. And it just feels less exhausting. 
and we have to keep our energy levels where we deserve for them to be because we're great at all kinds of things. The other thing is I want you guys, you don't have to do it now, but sometime today or tonight, write down the hardest thing that you've ever been through in your entire life. And I want you to remember, and it probably has nothing to do with work. It probably has nothing to do with work. We've been through divorces. We have babies at 16, some of us. <laughs> We've lost people in our lives. They passed away. They're not here anymore. We've been through so much. We're so strong, and we don't give ourselves credit for our strength. And we think, oh, all this stuff I've been through in my personal life has nothing to do with who I am going to be in my career. They're the same thing. They're the same thing. When I started owning that it is crazy that I had a baby at 16 and graduated from college, and that nothing is ever going to be that hard again, nothing. Then started to get a lot easier for me in my career. People are like, oh, you're so laid back. Like whenever things are on fire, you know, you're kind of doing higher, you climb. You have to take care of yourself. You have to tell yourself how great you are every day. Because if you're waiting for other people to do it, you might be waiting a long time. And that's just unfortunate. I believe it's changing, but we got time. You just have to give yourself that mantra. I do it all the time. I did it on Monday. I will never be 16 and pregnant again. <laughs> like, it's all good. It's a bad day, but I will never be 16 and pregnant again. Like, we are taking years off our life worrying about things that we have already conquered so much harder. By the time you're 15, you have probably conquered something harder than any career journey will take you through. That's real. And I think about, okay, what was my goal? when I was starting my career, and it was not to be on public assistance. It was to not be on public assistance for my son. It was my goal. And so anything that's happened since then has been cherry. And it's allowed me to live, not fearlessly, because I'm scared all the time, I'm scared right now, but it's allowed me to not stop when I get afraid. I just do it anyway, because it's like, all right, being an out of work vice president of finance, okay, I'm good still. Like, I'm good still. I'll be okay. I'll find another job. I still won't be on public assistance, and I'll be okay. And sometimes we achieve so much and we forget. We forget all that we have already achieved and done in our lives. And so we feel like we're not reaching our goals because we forget about every single thing that we've already achieved. Your goals were way simpler probably before. Right? And then you did them, and then you set a harder goal for yourself, and then you forgot that you accomplished all this stuff, right? So write this stuff down. Put it back at the forefront of your mind because you need it. You deserve to have it. You earned all of that. Write it down. Everything that you've overcome, every little goal, like not being on public assistance that you achieved. I bawled my eyes out when I found out what I was going to make as a financial analyst at Denver Health, my first big girl job out of college. I just, I was like, my God, that, I'm rich. <laughs> but it was just perspective, right? It was just perspective at the time. Sometimes it's like, oh, go back there, girl. Uh, perspective of like what is real, you know, in life and what you really wanted. And, and, and if you wanted to just be a great mom, and you are a great mom, give yourself credit for that every single day, even as you try to achieve career goals. If you wanted to be a great friend, if you wanted to have wine nights with your girlfriends, because you saw that growing up and you thought it was cool, give yourself credit for that every single day and write it down. If you write it down, you'll remember it. You'll remember I'm having a hard day. I'll never be 16 and pregnant again. If you haven't been through anything hard, you can use my mantra. You'll never be 16 and pregnant. <laughs> you'll never be 16 and pregnant, so it's all good. You can just use mine. I don't think anyone's under the age of 16 here, so nobody's gonna be 16 and pregnant. So you can make it through all of that. And then finally, I just wanna say, there's a difference between goals and plans. Set goals. Don't overstructure your plans. If the goal is I need to get to Miami by Tuesday, all right, that's my goal. If I say I gotta get to Miami, I have to take a United flight, that flight has to leave at 1040, I can't have a layover, which this is really my life, if I have a layover, I act like I'm dying. <gasps> what? I have to stop somewhere? Uh, if that's the thing, the chances that you think you're failing at your goal are gonna go up really high. Because flights get delayed. 
Hell, you might be stuck in Missouri for two days. It, it's probably a lovely place. I've never been there. <laughs> it's not my end. And what happens is we quit in Missouri. I was headed to Miami. That's the goal. Something went wrong. I had to stop in Missouri for two days and stay at this really awesome Hotel 8 or whatever. <laughs> and I was so stressed and so frustrated. And I thought, well, there goes my goal. My plan's all screwed up. There goes my goal. You could have just got up and got your butt on the plane to Miami the next day, but you quit and went home. And that's the difference. Like, I never would have planned to have a baby at 16, but it was a part of my journey. It was the part of my journey that I didn't even know I needed. I always wanted to go into business. My dad will tell you that. This was the goal. If I had said to myself, he means I can't, which so many, unfortunately, teen moms are saying to themselves right now, then I would never have reached this goal. But the goal is not the plan. Be flexible with your plans. They are going to change. You're going to spend time in Missouri. Like, <laughs> is anyone from Missouri? Like, <laughs> I swear I've never been there. It's just, you know, sounds, <laughs> South Dakota, <laughs> whatever, whatever. whatever. <laughs> in those places, right? And the only difference between people who get to Miami and don't is that they just decided that the goal is not achievable anymore because something in the plan went awry. And we love that. We love to plan. We love to, that's what makes us great. But you've got to be flexible, not with your goals. Never compromise your goals. Just know it's going to look totally different getting there sometimes. You're going to be on a bus. You're going to be sweaty. It's going to be hot. But you're going to get to Miami. You're going to throw a swimsuit on. You're going to get in the water. You can do it, any of it. And every day it's time to set new goals and to remind yourself of everything that you have accomplished in your life. And I think those those are the insights that I have. Like, I wish um, women knew how great we already are, how much the stuff in the resume is gonna pale in, you know, in comparison to like what we've already done. I can't even imagine when I think about my mom, like, God, she's so bad. She doesn't have VP titles. She's just so bad at Like, she's just the best. She got me through being 16 and pregnant. She got my sister through an addiction. She's never, ever, ever, ever given up on the goal of three successful children. My sister is a CEO of the, one of the largest roofing companies in Colorado at the age of 31. She was an addict for six years. It was miserable. We were in Missouri together as a family, right? <laughs> <laughs> my mom said, no, like, okay, this isn't what I planned. This isn't what I planned for my kids. But the goal, we're going to get there. Like, the goal is not going to change. And she never let me lose sight of that. And I don't want any of you to lose sight of that. The goal doesn't have to change just because it took longer, or just because you had a setback, or just because somebody really put you through something that you didn't deserve, because that's going to happen too, right? You still can get there. And I, for one, want you to get there. I need you to get there. I have a little girl. She's about to be 12 next week. She likes sneakers. It's her new phase. Jordans, which is really expensive. i got to keep working. Uh, I want her to just have it a little easier. And I think the only way that happens is if the people in this room make it to the top. That's the insight, right? Even the most well-meaning man on earth doesn't know what it's like to be a woman at the top. He could try, but he doesn't know. And so my daughter needs to come into environments where we believe in ourselves, where we know our worth, we know exactly what we've done to get where we are, and we know at the end of the day they can take it all away. We are already at the top. We have already accomplished more than anyone can even imagine. So I think that, I hope that was insightful. <laughs> Maybe I just lagged her for 20 minutes. But that, you know, that's, that's what I want to share. And I'm so grateful to Crystal and the Women of Denver team for having me and for all of you spending a little time with me. And 
my plan this morning was totally jacked up. I came from another speaking engagement and got pulled over and got stuck behind an accident. So whoever, so whoever had to go first, whoever I put into Missouri, I thank you so much. <laughs> but I mean, now I'm in the car. You'll never be 16 and pregnant again. 